Hi, it's me again, and one of you brilliant people out there sent me something that spiked my interest a little bit. And on a side note, if you want to send me something, you'll find the details how to do it below. But they sent me this over, and it, it, it piqued my interest, and I started looking into it. And the reason I want to do this quick little video is because I want to ask you people out there a favour. So let's talk about this, and then I'll get to the favour in a minute. So this is what I was sent. Um, we were talking about uh, the latest video I did where people filming when they get uh, a visit from one of the TV licensing goons, right? And uh, this came about, someone found it and sent it to me and I appreciate that. So this is about the TV licensed goons and their body worn video equipment so they can film you because it's okay for you to film them on your property or on the street, okay? But if they come onto your property, can they film you? Because it's on your property, don't they need your permission to do that? And this talks about that a little bit. So we're gonna have a quick look at this and then I'll get to the favor. So Capitula, who are contracted to enforce the TV license, trialled the use of body-worn video equipment between April and March to help safeguard the health and safety of their employees and to deter physical and serious verbal assaults against them, which I'm sure does happen quite often. I don't think I have a problem with them wearing, wearing you know, a camera. I'll get to that, why I think that, in a minute. So was the video equipment constantly recording? The video equipment was only activated when a visiting officer felt their health and safety could have been at risk because of the situation they were in. I think that's their get out of jail free clause for why they can film on your private property. Or the way they were spoken to, for example. In standby mode, the equipment recorded for 90 seconds and it's an overwriting loop to ensure that anything which may have happened in the lead up to the officer activating it was captured. But this recording was only saved if the equipment was activated. I don't know how much I believe of that because I quite like a dash cam in my car. I won't drive a car without a dash cam. And that records in a loop. But it doesn't overwrite itself. So if you put like a big memory card in it, it saves a load of loops, and then it goes to the oldest one and overwrites that, then the next oldest one and overwrites that, and the next oldest one and overwrites that. So I, I want confirmation that it does overwrite the current loop, because I doubt it will, because it's going to be off-the-shelf video stuff, you know, software and everything made in China. It's going to be a dash cam. It's all it's going to be, isn't it? And they just tap it and then it starts saving things can't be like a, like a dash cam. That's what it is. This is going to be just a cheap Chinese dash cam dressed up in a new dress and uh, sold to them for a couple of hundred quid a go, I would imagine, because it's not their money, is it? It's BBC's money. Would the visiting officer have stopped the recording if I had asked them? Not necessarily. The recording provides an accurate record of events for the benefit of the officer and those present. So he or she may have continued recording until they considered any risk to their safety had passed. And so I think that's their get out of jail free card for why they can film on your private property if they feel they're at risk. Was the officer allowed to video in my home? Yes, if the recording could be justified as being necessary and proportionate. What's necessary and proportionate? I guess that's for them to decide, not us. Hey. Right, so this is the bit I wanted to talk about. Can I get a copy of the recording? Yes, if your image or voice was captured in a the recording, then you have the right to receive a copy of it. Now, this is what the favour's going to be about, right? Because um, when you get a visit from one of these Capita goons, they have this little handheld thing. Here. Have a quick look at this, look. Obviously, we can't come in and check it at the moment, so because of COVID reasons. Well, well, you can't come in and check it anywhere. So what, sorry? You can't come in and check it anywhere. No, no, you're saying obviously. Now, some people have said to me, that that handheld thing, because if you look at it, it's at a funny angle. I've, I'll put it here again, look, have a look. It's at a funny angle, sort of facing towards the person, isn't it, that they're visiting. Is there a camera in there? It looks like there might be a camera in that bit of gear. And what is he writing? What's he tapping? What's he doing? I want to know, and no one can tell me, and I want to know what they're tapping, what they're writing, and if that is filming or recording sound. I want to know. And there is a way you can know. The subject access request form. So under data protection laws, you are entitled to a copy of any information held about you. And as it says there, you can get a copy of the video if, you, if there is video, but they also must give you any information they hold of you and all their notes they've made about you. They must, by law, give you a copy of it if you request it. So I've got this form here, okay? So I'm gonna put this form, I'm gonna put a link below to this form. This is a proper pucker form from TV licensing. And this is the favor. Now, if you have had a visit from TV licensing recently, I want you to do this form and send it off and get a copy of everything they hold about you. Only if they know your details, though. If you're still, you know, present occupier, 
then I don't do this because you are going to give them your details. But if they know who you are, when they knocked on your door and opened and said, hi, Mr. Smith, if they know who you are, do this. I would like to know what information they hold about you and what they were tapping in on their little machine. Now, this does cost a tenner to do. So please only do it if you have had a visit recently. And if you have had a visit recently, please email me and I will cover your tenner if you can't afford it or you don't want to pay it, whatever, because you're doing me a favour. I will cover the tenner. I can't do it for tens of thousands of you, but the first few people, like five or six people, I will cover the cost of the tenner and any administrative expenses you may have, like for the postage or whatever, and a letter, an envelope thing. I'll cover all your costs to get this because I want to see what information I hold about you. And obviously I want to talk about it on the channel. All your personal details I'll reduct out, so I won't do any of that. I just want to know what information they hold about you, what they tap into the machine, and if that thing has a camera in it. And this is how we'll know, because by law they have to give us the information they hold about you. So that's the favour I want. If, if you've had a visit recently, get this form, it's below. Contact me, and um, the first five or six people, I'll pay the fees to get this done so we can all find out what information they hold about us. Because the more we know, the better we can fight them. And that's the way I look at it. So yeah, I look forward to hearing from you if you want to do this for me. If you don't, that's fine, I get it. It's personal details or you don't want any, any dealings with TV licensing. I'm just hoping there's one or two of you out there that will be prepared to do this if you've had a visit recently. All right, so uh, thank you for that. I look forward to hearing from you and I'll see you in another video again soon. And hopefully another video in the future letting you know the results of what happens here. Thanks for watching.